no one cares how many home runs you hit when you were six. No one cares about how many touchdowns you scored when you were nine. All we care about is you developing and getting you good so you can be successful on Friday nights or, you know, when you're wrestling for the state title. We, we want to build for those, towards those moments. And kids have been, you know, they've been, there's, there's really no sense of community with them, with the fed ball and the travel ball and stuff like that. It's, you know, what can you do for me? Brandon Day is one of the most successful high school coaches in the state of Michigan. And he says it's time to change the way we are bringing up kids through youth sports programs. And that's a Duff Said. This is episode 14 of a Duff Said. I'm your host, Duff Tyler. Thank you so much for hitting the play button on Podbean. Now, my topic for this edition is America's youth sports culture and how, in the opinion of my guest at this time, it's in need of a big change. Now, Brandon Day is a legendary high school wrestling coach here in the state of Michigan. He's been at Richmond High School for the last 18 years, and in that time, he has guided the Blue Devils to eight team state championships, and seven other times, they were the runners-up. He's also guided 16 wrestlers in his program to individual state championships, so he's more than qualified to speak on this topic. Coach Day, it's been a minute. Thank you so much for making the time on this edition of A Duff Said. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. It is always good to catch up with you, and it's my pleasure to have you. Now, you wrote an article for a local paper earlier this year, and that article ended up getting picked up by USA Today, and in it, you stated quite clearly that you are not a fan of today's youth sports culture. Now, I'm just going to hand this off to you. What is it about it that you're not a fan of, and what do you see about it that needs to be fixed? First of all, I want to say I love sports, okay, and uh, opportunities for kids we love having opportunities for kids, but I think our youth sports culture today is kind of clouded. You know, I think it's a little bit more for mom and dad um, and a little bit more for, you know, people that are making money off of young kids and making money off of mom and dad, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses rather than, uh, you know, the pure love and enjoyment of starting a sport, the pure love and enjoyment of, uh, you know, trying different things. And, and unfortunately what's happened is kids today are pulled in so many different directions and they feel they're, they're not, they feel so much stress and anxiety about competing. And, and we're seeing, I mean, you're seeing commercials out now, like, you know, don't retire like as a youth athlete kind of thing. Like, you know, don't be their last coach commercials that are out, you know, on national TV because these kids, the, the joy is taken out of it because you know, they're trying to win national tournaments at 10 and 11. The mom and dad got them on two different fed ball teams. And it's, there's no sense of community. There's no sense of, uh, you know, it's, everything is, you know, be the best at 10 and 11. And, and it, we're not really getting the, you know, what's important. You know, we're not trying to develop athletes to be the best they can be when it matters. And kids are getting burned out from it. You know, I see, I coach middle school sports too. I coach football and, 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 Kids are, you can tell when they're, when they're stressed out. I mean, they, it's not a good thing and it's, it's hurting. I mean, numbers are down, you know, it's, it's not a good thing for, for all sports. I mean, wrestling, football, baseball, whatever. I mean, we gotta let these kids have childhood. What can we do to kind of change all that with uh, say the parents, you know, should they be letting them have more fun at 11 and 12? Because in the article you talk about how when you were that age, you were just hanging out with your friends. You were just having a good time at the roller rink. Nowadays, it seems like, as you touched on, that they're just getting involved in these like travel sports and things like that. You know, they can be a good thing, but uh, where do you see the negativity building? Right, and, and, and done correctly, it's a great thing. Okay, uh, the, the biggest issue I have with it is the lack of de- development and these private coaches you know, making promises to parents, like, you do this, and I promise you, this is where you're going to end up. I can tell you, you know, I've been coaching 18 years. You can't tell an 11- or 12-year-old that they're going to be a two- or three-time state champ and be a college athlete. Like, Mother Nature takes care of most of that, 
All right. And the, the issue that we run to with our youth sports here is there's too much focus on competition at a young age and not on proper development. You know, it, it's over and over again. You see it. The kid is really dominant at youth or middle school sports. He gets to high school and he's doing the same things that he got success with in the youth and middle school circuits at the high school level. And he's not having success. So then that kid, he gets frustrated. He quits. He blames other people, you know, when if mom and dad would have surrounded them with the right people and made the process fun and about development, that kid wouldn't hit his peak until he got to high school when it's important. You know, and that's, you know, there's, I, I mean, just, Hey, just talked a couple of weeks ago about youth football, you know, making it so youth football, you know, everybody can only play six games. I mean, you have some youth football leagues right now, they're playing 12, 13 games, 14 games with, with nine and 10 year olds. You know, if you're a youth wrestler in Michigan, you, you can go all over the country. There's seven different national titles you can win. There are kids that are ranked nationally in youth wrestling in Michigan that will never win a state title at the high school level. You know, and, and that happens because kids are being surrounded by people that are in it for the profit. And mom and dad, they love their kids. They love their kids, man. They see the their kids winning and having success when they start living through the kid. And it quits being about you know, what sports should really be about. And it starts being about like the, the kid is more of a, a property than a kid. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, it, it's not, uh, it's not a, uh, it's not about, I want little Johnny or little Susie to be a good person, a hard worker. It's about little Johnny and little Susie had to win and they had to win, they had to win, they had to win. And after a while that wears on a kid, you know, and it, if done correctly, you sports can be an amazing thing. Um, but unfortunately in the U S I mean, it's not happening. You know, I, HBO came out with a, with a special, I forget what country it is, but they dominated the winter Olympics and their kids practice until, you know, they're 12. It's all about development and practice and fun. And then when they get to be 13, 14, then they start competing, but they don't start competing until they're 13, 14, you know, total opposite of what we do here. And and that country got, I'm sorry, it's slipping my mind right now. They dominated the winter Olympics and they're, they're a quarter the size of us but their athletes are being developed properly. Now, as you can imagine, Coach, I talk to a lot of people in your profession. I talk to a lot of coaches. And one of the things that they always tell me they want to focus on with kids, aside from instructing them on the X's and O's and the fundamentals of the sport, is how to build relationships. Building relationships that they can have in the future. And you're always focusing on concepts like teamwork and game planning getting these guys together so that you guys can achieve a common goal with all those things that you just mentioned, do you see that as starting to circumvent what you guys are trying to instill in these kids? Well, I can tell you, I coach middle school football here. I've been doing that for 18 years as well. And since youth football has really exploded and youth baseball, fed balls really exploded about, I think third, the last 13 years, a big part of my job has been getting kids to understand it's not just about them and it's about everybody else. And, you know, and, and getting them to understand, like, no one cares how many home runs you hit when you were six. No one cares about how many touchdowns you scored when you were nine. All we care about is you developing and getting you good so you can be successful on Friday nights or, you know, when you're wrestling for the state title. We, we want to build for those, towards those moments. And kids have been, you know, they've been, there's, there's really no sense of community with them, with the fed ball and the travel ball and stuff. Like it's, you know, what can you do for me? Like it's, I never felt I ever had to sell myself to parents or kids the first seven, eight years of my career where now that's kind of the way it is because they, you know, it, it's not, this guy's a great guy. He's a good human being. He's going to treat my kid right. It's, what can you do for my kid? Or, you know, I, I don't, you guys run this offense. I don't agree with it. Or um, my kid's only going to wrestle here because that's what's best for him. And that's not what's best for the team. We, we totally have to, I mean, we have to like reprogram these kids and, and so much more than just the technique or the training. We have to get them in the mindset that, you know what? Good people are unselfish. Good people do what's best for the group. And, and, and we have to reprogram these kids because they're, that's not being taught to them at a young age. It's about me, 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 me. 
Now, as I mentioned at the start of this conversation, you have accomplished so much with your program at Richmond High School. It has a huge following. You have turned high school wrestling into a big ticket item in your neck of the woods in Michigan. But now that I'm hearing that you do have to deal with those helicopter type parents, what does it do for your mentality as a coach? Well, I tell you, like it, it, we're pretty fortunate here. Um, it it uh, at the high school level, we don't have to deal with that stuff. It's more that we got to fix it up at the middle school level. Kids will come. I mean, there's kids that live in Richmond that don't wrestle for our youth wrestling club because we don't compete enough. And I have parents say to me, like, "Well, we're going to come to high school. You know, we we live in Richmond, go to Richmond, but we're going to train with this club because they compete way more." And you know, I tell them, like, right now. Richmond High School, we, we have, you know, three guys that are on full-ride scholarships, NCAA Division One. We have two guys that are ranked top 20 in the country, NCAA Division One, And they went through the system and program that we do. And when I wrote, when I wrote the article, you know, people kind of – some people, I'd say 1% bashed me for saying, well, you want – I want everybody to win, everybody gets to play quarterback, this and that. That's not what I meant. We want to develop high-level athletes. We want to get guys into college and this and that. But it's unrealistic. You know, and I, I'm, think, I'm being honest to parents. It's unrealistic to think that every kid can do that. They can't. They, we want them to work as hard as they can, become good people, gain good values from what we're teaching them. And if everything lines up, awesome. You get to be Devin Skanska, Jake McKernan, Colt McKernan. You get to be those guys. But if it doesn't, that doesn't mean you're a bad human being. That doesn't mean you did something wrong. Maybe you're just not as physically gifted as them. And so we try to be as open and honest with the parents. And some parents, I'll be honest with you, you know, some some kids quit. Some parents take their kids elsewhere. And we continue to do what we do because we know it's the right thing to do for kids. You know, we're trying to develop good people here first. One of the things that you wrote in that article that really stuck with me was when you said the concept of role players just isn't being valued anymore. And it's true. I see it all the time. And you hit on it brilliantly when you said, you know, kids don't want to be that sixth man on a basketball team. They don't want to be the utility player on the baseball team. What they really want is to see their name in the box score. They want to see their name in the paper. They want to show up in those Friday night highlight shows. And they want to create a buzz about themselves on social media. Now, as coaches... It's your jobs to evaluate that talent and to fill those spots accordingly. So is it all just a matter of the parents or the athletes, or in some cases even both, that just aren't trusting your judgment and trusting the process? Uh, you know, I, I watch kids, the expectation and the stress that is put on these kids at a young level. And if, if they're not perfect coming into high school, the easiest thing to do is just to stop and quit or to blame someone else. If I don't reach my goal, I can blame someone else. You know, and, and that's getting back to you. Not everybody can be Jake McKernan, Colton McKernan, Devin's casket. Not everybody can be them. That's okay. You know, be, be the guy that doesn't get pinned and his team wins the state title. Be the, be the overachieving, hardworking guy that, you know, maybe takes fifth in the state or is a state qualifier. That's okay. I think the kids can handle that, but the parents can't. And the parents get unrealistic expectations for their kids. And when the kid doesn't fa or doesn't reach their potential, in their eyes, there's got to be someone to blame. So you know, you the coach athlete relationship. Like we spend a lot of time knocking down walls between us and the athletes to get them to trust us because the environment they're brought up in, you know doesn't support that you know i mean it role players are important and it's okay to be you know i look in football numbers are down in football across the country and people say concussions this and that i agree that plays a role but i think a lot of it is kid played quarterback his whole career in youth football and he gets to high school and they want him to play receiver or he played fullback in youth football and he gets to high school and they want him to play guard and they're just not willing to do it you know because they want to they want to take care of themselves and they've always been the guy they play on the youth football team that they are the youth baseball team that their dad and and their dad's buddy were the coaches of and they're the best guys and when it comes to come together in high school it's hard to accept you know what so and so might be better than me 
All right. And then 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you did what was best for your community. You do what's best for your school. And you, you know what? I'm going to take pride in being the best left guard I can be. I'm going to take pride in being, you know, the best, you know, left fielder or right fielder I can be. Not everybody can be the shortstop. And that's okay. Take pride in doing those other things really, 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 really well. I want to ask you about a tweet that I see that's always popping up on social media. These coaches that always tweet out that they want to see kids get the concept of not just sticking to one position or even one sport. Many of them encourage guys to play different sports throughout the school year. How many of your guys do that, and how beneficial is that to their well-being as athletes from your point of view? Uh, we have 510 kids in our high school here, Richmond High School, and we're extremely successful across the board athletically because the majority of our kids play two and three sports. And I think if you you talk to college coaches, like real college coaches, not, not somebody's dad's buddy that played or what i mean like you talk to real coaches they want their guys they're they're recruiting in stressful situations all the time they want that guy you know playing football when it's fourth and one they they want that guy wrestling when all the pressures on him to to get a win to to win the dual meet they, they want the guy standing in the batter's box with the full count with two outs in the seventh inning they, they want those guys. I mean, our three D1 scholarship guys right now, Jake McKernan, Devin Skatska, Colt McKernan, all three of those guys were three-sport All-State in high school. Okay, so it, it can be done. And in, in our community, all of our coaches get along, and we, we do what's best for kids. And we know those kids, the majority of them, aren't going to get a chance to go to college. So we want them to make as many awesome memories as they can in the four years that they're with us at the high school level. And uh, like I said, our guys that have had the most success were, were three sport athletes. And, and all the research shows, I mean, the only guys that against it really are the fed ball coaches or, you know, I got my pitching and hitting coach or I got my seven on seven passing coach that's making a ton of money off of what I pay, you know, him or her. And, and, and they're the ones, oh, you got to focus and play one sport when, in reality, three, two and three sport athletes, that's what college coaches want. They don't want the guy that, you know, is that guy's going to be burnt out or he's going to get injured from overtraining doing one thing all, you know, all, all the time. And that's, I mean, it's documented, it's proven, but you, you convince parents that if they really focus on this and get a hitting coach or a shooting coach or this or that, it, it, it's, it's not a good thing for kids, man. It's not, but parents get convinced of it and they're trying to keep up. They love their kids. They want to do what's best for their kid. And in the end, you get a bunch of kids who only played one sport their whole career, and they look back on their four years, and they wish they would have done more. You touched on it brilliantly because not every kid wants to hear this and not every parent wants to hear this, but the odds of going on to being an NCAA athlete, even at like the Division three level, is very small. And how often right. do you see these parents – that are pushing these kids to play sports nonstop. Is it a matter of them trying to, you know, ease the burden on their wallet so they'll get that scholarship and go on to college, or are they maybe even trying to fill out a fantasy that they never had? You know, we've been fortunate here. We haven't dealt with a lot of that, um, but we have dealt with some. And I'd say a, a lot of it is, is you know, as kids, you have peer pressure. Well, as adults, you know, and parents love their kids, you know, so you can't blame them for it, but. They see the kid down the road playing, you know, on two different travel softball or baseball teams. They, they see the kid down the road get a pitching coach or a hitting coach. So that parent wants to keep up. They want to, they want to do what's best for their kid in their mind. They really don't know. And what they should do is go to their local high school coach and say, Coach, he's part of your program. What, what do you think? Or they should, you know, email a college coach and ask me, should my kid play two or three sports? Don't go to the people that are profiting off it. And don't feel like just because your neighbor's doing something doesn't, you know, mean you, you need to do something. You do the same thing. I mean, it's those parents that buy in and listen, it's awesome watching their kids succeed. And, and I really, I feel bad for those other parents who don't buy in because nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but the majority of the coaches that, that are in this are in this for kids to help them become better people and better athletes. And, you can hit all the baseballs you want to hit. 
that that's not going to make you great. You, you can shoot all the jump shots you want to shoot. It, it's going to help you get good, but eventually athletic ability comes into play. All right. And so you can take a kid who's never played youth sports, but is a super phenomenal athlete, teach him the right things fundamentally, surround him with the right people. And he's going to be better than the kid who's been doing this stuff for his whole life, seven days a week. It, that's, it's just fact. I mean, it, it, you know, ability, you know, conquers all. And, and parents have to understand, like, your kid has what he's gifted. Let him enjoy it. Let, let him be around his pals, his buddies. Let, let's get more life lessons out of it than, than, than let's worry about college scholarships. Who needs to have this conversation with the parents that what they're doing isn't helping them, it's hurting them? I think it's got to start. I think what, what has happened was gotten out of control. High school coaches, and, and shame on the guys who don't get involved, but high school coaches need to control their youth clubs, need to control their middle school programs, and they need to mentor those parents and those younger coaches. We need to get it back where we're not doing all this fed stuff and travel stuff. It's got to be at the high school level, and everybody that has the same vision for helping kids be successful is together, working together, and we're talking about a common goal at the end when they're 17 and 18, not when they're 9, 10, and 11. We're working towards that common goal of a state title, maybe a scholarship, or maybe just being a great role player, whatever it is. But we're working fundamentally, and we're, we're working you know, uh, emotionally towards that goal. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's that program together from the bottom up getting those kids to be successful. When you have the third-party people come in and tell parents certain things and tell kids certain things, it messes it up. And good kids get ruined as a result. We're talking with Brandon Day, the wrestling coach at Richmond High School. When you took over the program at Richmond, did you ever imagine that you could have had the success that you had? I was very blessed. Like, like I said, you know, I, I feel very fortunate that I had a great mentor in George Hamlin and uh, he had, he had had success before I got here. Um, and we, we took a little dip and he let me, the things we're talking about, I know they work because he let me do the grassroots stuff from the bottom up with our youth club and our middle school program. And, you know, and as a result, we've had all the success we've had, but, um, I just wanted to help kids. You know, I was motivated to help kids be the best they could be. And, uh, as a result, you know, we earn trust with, with the, the good families here. And, and as a result of that, we've had, you know, we won our championships and this and that, but we've developed a lot more good human beings and a lot, a lot of good husbands and fathers. And that, that's, that's what I'm most proud of. You know, we, the other stuff took care of itself, I think, because we focused on the, the, the fundamental things, you know, being good people, good, being good hard workers and being loyal when they're young and that, once those things were instilled, the rest was easy. And how long did it take for the community that was giving you their kids to buy into what you were doing? I would tell you, it, that's an every year thing. I, I thought when I was a young coach, you'd win a couple state titles and everybody would think you're great and, and everybody would just buy in. But I'll be honest with you, it's, you have to convince a new group of youth and middle school parents every year that you are honest and you are trustworthy and that you want what's best for their kids. Um, at the high school level, once we get them to high school, it, that's already done. You know, I mean, that, that trust has already been built, but it's, it's, I'd say people, people know we're good and they, they know that, you know, we help kids out, but the, you know, does this guy really have the best interest of my child at, and at heart? You have to, you have to get that every year. I mean, you, you have to, Parents want to be shown, you know, that they can trust you. They they want to they want to believe the things you say, but until your actions take place and you do the things that you say you're going to do, they're not all in. And that's that's a year in year out thing with society today. Unfortunately, that's not a uh, that's not something that is just hey these guys are good. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them to practice at three, get out of their way, and let them coach. I mean, you you have to prove that year in and year out. This is coming from someone who has won eight state championships and guided 16 individual wrestlers to state titles. So like you said, it's a process every year to convince parents that you're the right guy to lead their kids. But 
is there still that mentality that you're seeing in your own program with these uh, like kids who, and parents who have this me first and my kid must come first mentality? At the lower levels, like I said, we have to re- kind of reprogram them. At the high school level, I mean, a 16, 17-year-old kid's a lot different than a 13, 14-year-old kid, you know, mentally. At the high school level, um, it's more, you know, you, you've got to talk to the kids like, like they're adults and, and they buy in. I mean, there is, there are kids, I mean, your issues at the high school level are, are different than your issues at the lower level. I mean, you're talking like relationship issues, you know, the pressure of picking the right college or, t- you know, all, all those things that happen while you're in high school, when it, um, you know, different than, than middle school, obviously um, you, you've got to, I mean, those kids got to trust you. They have to trust you. If they don't trust you, you, you have no chance. But um, we, we don't have a bunch of it at the high school level. I mean, there are certain cases where, like, you got to put your arm around a kid and be like, hey, man, we're all in this for everybody. You know, I, I'm glad you're super successful. But remember, you know, individual success beca- comes because you're on a great team. And, and we're nothing unless all of us are having success together. So you, you have to remind them of that. We, we haven't had. I mean, I, 18 years have been blessed. I can't think of, you know, hundreds of kids, you know, selfish athletes like that. I mean, the, the kids usually do what it takes for one another. I was just going to ask you that, you know, if I'm a kid and I'm looking to get into your program and I see state championship banners, I see guys that have had that individual success, I'm thinking, I want to be a part of that. I want to be that guy. But there's a lot of work that goes into it. How do you keep those kids grounded? Right, and that's you know I talk, I just had this conversation with my middle school football team yesterday because middle school wrestling season is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we have you know 510 kids in our school, and only 30 kids wrestle at the high school level, 30, 35 usually. And you would think, you know, kids, 15 trips to the finals, this and that, that kids would be like, you know what, I want to be a part of that. But because of youth sports today we really have to like explain to kids, like this is not like, you know, winning state titles and being, you know, doing these things. These, it's not like moving a mountain. Okay. Like get over the anxiety of it. Come be with us. If you're not the best guy, you don't have to be the state champ. If you, we just want, we want you to come and experience the hard work, the camaraderie. And once we get that, you know, those walls broken down with kids, they love it, but it's not, uh, you know, I thought when I came in in 0203, they just won the state title the year before and graduated a ton of guys. And went into the freshman meeting, and there were only four kids in there. And I said to Coach Hamlin, I said, you know, I thought there'd be like 25 kids in here. And he's like, you know, with, with, with success comes expectation. And some kids, because they were that great youth guy or middle school guy, they – they don't want that expectation in high school and they kind of run from it. And so we try to, we try to lessen that burden, you know, talking about the team, like it's about all of us, you know, not, not one guy has to carry the flag. You know, we got 30, 35 guys with, with their hands on the flag together and we'll get it done together. We'll win and lose together. You're about a month away from yet another season at Richmond high school. What are your expectations for this year? We've got a great group back. Um, you know, we're, I think we're currently ranked number two in the state, and uh, we're trying to win the state title. You know, that's the expectation every year, and try to win the state title, try to develop quality human beings, and then work as hard as we can. You know, we're we're not going to uh, – last year we lost the state title by a point. Um, and we had a great group of kids that gave us all they had. And, you know, it 20 years ago I might have been devastated. Uh, now, you know, being you know, a four-year-old man with two young kids – I just, I love the chase, you know, the chase of it. And, and I love uh, watching the kids develop. And, and we got really close, wrestled really well. And this year we're looking at it the same way. You know, if we can if we can put it all together and win it, that'd be amazing. But all we're looking for is the kids to give us all they have every day. He is Brandon Day, the head wrestling coach at Richmond High School. Coach Day, this was an amazing conversation, and I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here and talk about some of the concerns you have with the youth sports culture here in America. Perhaps by having this conversation, maybe you've changed some perspectives. I appreciate that. And I, I hope parents realize like it's not 
no one's attacking parents. You know, parents want what's best for the kids. They love their kids. But let's, let's, you know, we teach kids. I teach kids. I'm a teacher. Let's get to the parents and let's, let's have a, you know, educated discussion and, and, and really put them in a position to do what's best for the kids long term when it comes to athletics. And on that note, we put episode 14 to bed. But here's a look at what's on tap for episode 15. Father Tom has an excuse to go sit down. He's had cancer. He's had strokes. He's blind. And when I was reading it, I was thinking to myself, I've got three real good excuses. And I could sit down any time and somebody would take care of me. But I said, you know something? I don't want to be taken care of. I'm enjoying myself. I'm doing something that I like and I love. I'm able to help people out. And it just, it just, it just motivates me. I just keep on moving. He's been called Flint's Miracle Man. He's also been called the oldest rookie in professional wrestling. Pure Pro Wrestling's Father Time competes in the ring despite being blind. He's also had to battle strokes and cancer, neither of which have been able to hold him down for the one, two, three. There is no time like Father Time, and you'll hear his story on episode 15 of A Duff Said. Until then, I'm Duff Tyler reminding you, if Duff said it, it must be true. Because that's what a Duff said.